Start recording. Start broadcasting. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Shanhagen's Live on this Wednesday, the nearing end. the end of March. What up? It's the 28th. There we go. Wednesday, 28th of March. We got Katie over here. Hello. We got me right here. I. I'm still seeing spots. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do? I, I was adjusting the lights over there for the mm -hmm. whatever you film people call it. It just for lighting. The image just burned in my. You flash bang yourself somehow. I did flash bang myself, but I have to ink today, so. We're gonna <laughs> have an interesting <laughs> we're time. But uh, if this is your first time watching, I actually do apologize because in my rush over here, I completely forgot to bring the mic equipment. Yeah, which means I have to talk louder than usual. And I can talk quieter than usual because I'm closer to the built-in microphone. Oh. Uh, normally the show sounds awesome, but I guess since we've just had the 25th uh, anniversary episode last <laughs> week, now it's kind of like a, a throwback to old times, even though I actually had good mic equipment from the very beginning, mm -hmm. but this is what the show could be like, so you're going to really appreciate next week's episode, because we'll have the stuff we always have here, Yeah. and it'll sound good again. <laughs> uh, if you want to join us, as always, we are opening up the pop-out chats here on Ustream, live on Ustream, chatting on Ustream. What a novel idea. Um, if so you novel. are opposed morally or... I'm trying to think of another reason you'd be opposed to things. Uh, immorally? Immorally opposed to using Ustream. You can also go to Katie's Twitter, at Katie Shy. Uh, we have that open. Because also on Ustream you can't post links. Someone suggested that's a setting. I see no settings on this at all. Yeah, I so think you that up, suggester. There we go. If you guys have any better ideas. We've got Inna St. Louis, Shag is lighting. I'm here now. Wait, what? 734. I am here, right? You see me, right? And this is claiming I'm not here. What is going on? Are we here? We're I think here. so. You guys see us, right? Hi. You guys, you see us? Okay, okay in this guy, do you see us in this? In this. TV dinner sees us. In this. Today's been a comic copy of ups and downs. Okay. Okay. Okay, as long as Chris is good. It's good. It's good. It's good. I don't care if Chris sees us. Oh, gosh. <laughs> he picks on you because he likes you. That's like true. He's like my Padawan. He's gonna have to grow the little twisty hair Padawan thing on the brain. side, and then when he graduates, I go with a lightsaber. It's gonna be a plastic one, so we're gonna keep going until it cuts off. Do you think that's what it is? You don't become a master until like you get your yeah. No, Yoda did that. Off. He's like, hey, guess what? And boom, you're now a Jedi. You got no ponytail, and he's like, oh. but you know that's how it is. Yeah. And this is hi. What's up? What's up? Mm. Endless guys saying glad to be back. Question is, where was you? <laughs> Whether you wish to fill us in or not is entirely up to you. If you want to include holiday snaps, everyone's going on holidays or coming back from holidays. I got people oh, coming yeah. back from Vancouver, people coming back from Thailand, and yeah. I was here all along. People had their March break, too. Oh, yeah. I remember those. As a kid. <laughs> <laughs> it was a jolly old time. What are you working on here right now? Uh, some commissions. Let's right jump now. over to Katie Cam. Doosh, so boosh, do. Do, 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 do. Uh, this one right here. You probably can't see the reds too well. Let me bump the quality a little. I don't want to do it too much because in yeah. this computer doesn't like when I bump the it quality. Might, it might be one of those things where, yeah, the lighting's not so great. You'll see it as All right, once, once Katie gets a bit of an outline, we'll come back to that. But for now, we'll just stay on my face. Yeah. How's it going again, guys? Uh, all right, so what's going on? Oh, man, I, I'm making notes every episode now because I have so much I want to talk to you. Oh, good. Look at me. Firstly and foremostly, uh, I spent Monday... Uh, messing around with shanahanigans.com. Yeah. <laughs> we, we ended up getting a WordPress site, and so he was just messing well, around with that. Well, basically, um, we, we've owned the domain, like, forever. And then we weren't going to use it anymore, because for some reason you didn't want to use the word shanahanigans. Well, and I then thought that it would we be hard gonna... for people to spell. Yeah. And then it would be like, oh, go to shanahanigans. And it's like, I don't know what this site is, and then nobody checks us out. It's pretty easy. If you know our last name, it's Shanahan. And if you like, Iggins. But I'm like, people are going to be like, is it Aggins? Is it no, Shanahan... Iggins, there's only one I and a bunch of A's. So S H A N A H A N I G A N S. We just need a jingle. So, like, yeah. when you highlight the internet, there'll be a <laughs> dun 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 like a little sing song yeah. in like poor quality MIDI voice. S H A N A H A N I G A N S. We can get one of those. Um, one of my favorite websites for generating voices is called Look Up AT&T Real Voice, and you can get this British guy. To voice everything for you, and you'd be like, "Hello, go to shanahanigans.com." That's awesome. He's the best. His Actually, name is Charles. Have, uh, Charles is rock. I've been doing that a lot with um, like I I'll go to blogs and want to read blog posts, but mm. I don't have time to sit there and read it because I'm working. So I know. I'll highlight it and then do the robot voice. Well, wait, where's your robot voice option? Is that built uh, into Mac? Yeah. Where? Yeah, like, um, it's in the internet oh. like, somewhere. I, I didn't act. I've been having that problem too. Sometimes, like, there's all these articles without pictures. I'm like, oh, nothing breaks the monotony. So I want to like. 
it's just to be read to me. But like, I yeah. always find those like demo softwares. That's like 140 words. That's all. I'm like, ugh. No, so keep... this you can do a whole bunch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Courtney Lenz says, I'm loving the web banner at Shane Hagen's. That's just a temporary one. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> if you go to Shane Hagen's, Dot com. It's it's in progress. We're not yeah. done yet. It's so. it's very weird. There's like honestly, there's no reason for me to post a picture of Scar with a beer. Scar from Lion King with a beer and a microphone. Sure there is. Not on our website. <laughs> it's a temporary thing. We have a single. There's a single um, right now. There's like I, I just want to figure out how it works. Cause right now we're using WordPress, which everyone's like, oh WordPress. But on top of that, we're using Comic Press, yeah. which is like, what's this Comic Press? Now it's my question. So I spent Monday basically learning everything <laughs> from I don't I don't even wake up. Normally, at good hours. Like, I wake up at, like, 12. Yeah, you called me at 9 in the morning, and I was just like, I woke up at 8. <gasps> Who is this? And I called you, assuming you're awake, because you're diligent. And you're, like, sleeping. I'm like, what is this? That was one day I, I was up late yeah. working. And so, I was up from, like, 9 till, like, 8 o'clock, just chipping away at shanhannigans.com and just figuring things out. It feels good and to up early. It does. You get a full day, and I was trying to do that again today, and I woke up and ended up being 12 again. I'm like, what happened? I know. But to be fair, I couldn't sleep last night. I was awake till five, just lying there, like, why? <laughs> I'm like, sleep, take me, <laughs> whisk me off to dreamland. <laughs> but it didn't really happen. Um, but yeah, so check out the site. Give us your feedback. It's there's like we know pretty much most of the mistakes with it too. But like uh, just for navigational purposes, tell me what you think. If you want to get back to us, you can just uh, send us a message or meet us in person and sit us down and buy us tea and be like, look, I'm gonna level with you. This site. <laughs> There's, there's got to be more words for amateurish, because I can't say nothing. <laughs> but, you know, it's... it's you or know, you could I, just buy us tea. Or that. Not. <laughs> or go on, like, teopia.com and send us a packet of tea with a nice message. Yeah. That'd be nice. And a strainer. One of those fruit arrangements. Where's the chocolate or that. fruit arrangement? It's with a little sign that says, your site sucks. <laughs> well, Chris the host. So, <laughs> so it'll be that kind of thing. But, um, so check it out. Uh, so tell me if the buttons are too big, if you'd rather something to be over here or there. You know, um, we basically are just looking for functionality. For yeah, now, we're still tweaking it. We're still tweaking it. Eventually, it's just going to be like there's an archive of comics. Um, the other good news is there's a direct link there that takes you um, takes you to the Silly Kingdom dash comic dot blogspot, whatever the hell it is. But I spent the time to figure out how to get a nasty redirecty whatever URL. SillyKingdom.com now works. Yeah. Boom. Now you can tell your friends. You know, originally you're like, oh man, there's this greatest book ever. And you're like, where is it? Oh, it's at Philly Kingdom Dash Comic Dot Blocks, and they're already sleeping and leaving <laughs> you and defriending you on Facebook. But oh. now, SillyKingdom.com, and it's like, whoa, this sounds so new and fresh. We gotta check this website out. So now you can tell your friends, SillyKingdom.com, you'll be there. Um, we'll be the coolest kid in school. You'll be the coolest kid in school. Or your office. Or your office. Or wherever you hang out. <laughs> or your teacher. Or your house. Mmm. Coolest kid in the house. Go to sillykingdom.com, tell your friends. A lot easier. Um, it still actually takes you to the blog, but I'm like, I don't want to build another site. <laughs> I'm like, this is good enough it for now. So like, honestly, as long as the URL takes you there, it redirects you, I'm happy. I don't care. And the other half of it is also the website does exist on other people's like books and stuff that says sillykingdom-blogspot. So if, someone, if we change it now, maybe yeah, we'll it's like, oh. So there's that. Check all that out. That's that's big, big web. Like this is big for me. I know a lot of you are like, oh, I make websites in my sleep, yeah. but this is big news for me because I never make websites in my waking life. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's good because we finally have a home for show monkeys. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Ever since Girlomatic kind of disappeared, kind of left us all. I even tried looking at like one of those uh, Wayback Machine websites where it's like it took a snapshot of every web page ever. Yeah, they I, have it. I couldn't really find anything. Though I do find old uh, closet space sometimes. Oh. <laughs> Some of the old websites we worked on. Yeah. Probably the old uh, Oni Sushi and stuff too. If you that think was back. our first website yeah. Uh, collective. Yeah, there's, we have a bunch of old weird crap. <laughs> that being said, JanetHannigans.com still has all the old closet space folders though. I think you like just changed the name, but kept. Yep. So it has all the old like radio plays just buried in there, and all the old uh, websites. I was back when um, I was using Dreamweaver. I'm like, oh, you can actually have a single picture and just highlight areas to be links, so you're not actually literally making links and stuff. But anyway, what? And it says, wait, website, I missed a lot. This has been the first, like, 20 minutes of this show. <laughs> just so nice. All right, the brief. <laughs> we Hannigan's... saying sillykingdom.blogspot. <laughs> yeah. Shannonhannigans.com is an actual site right now. If you can spell it, you'll find it. Remember, it's S-H-A-N-A-H-A-N-Higgins with an I. Ding. It's not like there were two A's in there. Maybe I screwed that up. S-H-A-N-A-H-A-N-Higgins with an I. And an A after the I at some point. Higgins. <laughs> <Hey, guys. laughs> 
Worst jingle ever. Ding. Uh, let's check that out. Oh, we got Andrew Draws. Andrew Draws here. Oh. Hey, everybody. Hello. Buddy. What's happening, Andrew? What's, what's, what's up? What's doing? Andrew Draws. Adam Draws. Why did I say Andrew? I am not. All right. I'm going to explain myself. If you watched the beginning of this episode, I was working on a website all Monday. That messed up my brain. So it's Adam Draws. What's going on? What's, that's Adam of Guys with Pencils, right? So Wait, I mean, then who's Andrew Murr? Andrew Murr. It's, it's the other half. Damn. I like saying his name. <laughs> that's why I, I like organically went to Adam. Um, I'm inking your drawing, finally. <laughs> oh, son. It's actually showing up, so let's jump over to Katie Cam. Like, wiggity wham. What we got? Uh, bring, right now we've got a, bring a little closer to that okay, we've got an outline of a head. Got some hair. Got some moving hair. Uh, that's bit. exciting. Yeah. That's always exciting. So we're back in commission mode. We're getting them commissions done. Yeah. And, like, uh, I want to say also a congrats to you guys with pencils for a year in podcasting no! of animation and comic news and entertainment. Most of us barely make it a year doing anything, but you guys did podcasting. They're That's awesome huge. guests. They got lots of great topics. Check out guyswithpencils.com, I assume. They interview two of us and uh, me solo. I was actually listening to them yesterday. And there was <laughs> <laughs> Just to hear my sweet, sweet voice. I know. I'm awesome. so witty. <laughs> <laughs> but in it, it was like, I'm going to get on your commission soon. I was like, God damn it. Well, here it is. I'm glad you showed up for this episode. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. Better than Chris, the host, the guest, the clone. Yeah. One, two, three. Jam. Uh, that's always confusing. But yeah, check out Guys with Pencils. If you like pods and you like castings, you gotta listen to their show. We got some guests on who are all like, hey, I make things. And I'm like, yeah, I make it too. So you got this instant bond with all the guests. Mm. Speaking of podcasts, uh, I finally listened to more. My favorite podcast, Keith and the Girl. I don't know if you ever listened to that, but Katie. I got you hooked on that. Yeah. yeah. Great show. It's, it's basically about a couple in New York and stuff. That's silliness. But um, I'm way behind. I'm a good, I'm living two years in the past listening to their show because I kind of, I used to be, no, I don't even know if I ever was on time with them, because I started from the very beginning, back when I worked at, like, the Alliance building. And I spent, like, many lonely nights on the computer just listening to them talking to keep me busy. And I decided to just keep going in order, because I wanted to hear... And the interesting thing I came to was, the two-year difference wasn't that big of a difference, because all the same stuff was in the news anyway. Yeah, like, it's all weird. In the newspaper, it's like, oh, Kanye right? just did something stupid on an award show. And I'm listening to a show from two years ago, Kanye did something stupid on an award show. I'm like... Whoa, and it's like, Lindsay Lohan drinking and drugs. I'm like, she's drinking and drugs in my timeline. It's like, nothing changes. <laughs> you know, so I wasn't really behind on anything. It was guess, weird. Yeah. The world never changed. People are pretty... Predictable. Like, yes. <laughs> it, was, it was really interesting, but um, the, the most recent revelation that came from listening to them, they basically point out something that finally explains them to me. Okay, so, you know that song, Totally Clips of the Heart? Turn around, every now and then I feel it. For some reason, I had this, like, connection to it. I don't know why. Like, I don't even know who the band is, I don't know who they are, mm -hmm. I don't even know if I like them, but it's like, every now and then I fall apart, it's like, oh, you know, it's like, feels like a big thing. What I realized by listening to this show is they told me, the writer of that song also wrote songs for Meatloaf. So, uh, Bad Out of Hell, which I love, he wrote Totally Clips of the Heart. I see that And I'm like, now. the rock opera connection was made, I'm like, it makes sense now. Yeah. That's why I love Totally Clips of the Hearts. I can see that connection. Because it's like You big... just wish Meatloaf sang it. Maybe. That would have been priceless. But it's just like, you know, you love Bad Out of the Hell because it's like this eight, 11 minute long anthem. And then, is it Bonnie Tyler? There you go. Brian Avenue is saying Bonnie Tyler. I don't know if that's a guy or girl because I keep hearing the Tyler part. It might well, be a girl. A, a lady Whoever wrote it. Sorry if I, if I mixed it up. Oh, old school. Maybe. I'm, I'm, I don't know if you're referring to the Totally Clips of the Heart person or... Meatloaf. Well, whoever wrote Bad Out of Hell and Until Eclipse of the Heart, I believe, are supposed to be the same person. Mm -hmm. And that just blew my mind and also made things make more sense. So everything's connected. Yeah. The world became a little bit more uh, clear. Yeah, I know. I remember, oh, here's the best, here's another story about Bad Out of Hell. Uh, one day I was walking by a bar to go get some money at ATM. And I hear, like, Bad Out of Hell kicking off, like, no, 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 you know, mm -hmm. that thing. And then I go, and I'm, like, in the machine for a while, and I come back out. The song is still playing. <laughs> I walk down the street, and it's like, day is done, and the song, like, this song just never <laughs> ends. Have you ever gone to a wedding, like, where it's a lot of older folks? Well, older, I'm, like, 40s. But, some, <laughs> but someone, will choose, someone will pick that on the, the DJ will play it, and it's like, you start off dancing, and then it's like, you're still kind of yeah. hanging around on the dance floor, and then it's not That wasn't my fault, was it? <laughs> no, but I've been there like, weddings where I'm just like, 
I don't know, there's some really quiet, slow parts. To no, the thing I realized is I've been to enough weddings recently that I found out all the de wedding DJs are hacks and they all have a bass wedding playlist. Because I swear I've heard the same songs in a row at two it's weddings I've been to. Just because they would never play the songs you wanted. Well, that too. But like, like come on, man, the both, at, both at our cousin's wedding and another wedding I went to before that, I swear to God, I've heard the exact same songs in a row. Like, let's get it up tonight, tonight. Tonight's gonna be the next was shots, 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 shots. Yeah, my favorite, and the next my was favorite apple memory. bottom. She's like, wait a minute, I've heard this exact playlist. Do you remember? I'm sure they paid that friggin'. Probably the same collection, but do you remember Grandma dancing to shots, 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 shots? Yeah, that's one of those rare moments. That's adorable. <laughs> she just turned 84. Oh, did she? How recent was that? Uh, her birthday was yesterday. Good on her. Good job, Grandma. Good job, Grandma. Tell them. Rocks it to the. <laughs> shots. Do the like, shot. they play that shots, at the at shots, the golf shots, club shots, for a birthday? Shots, it's just like, hey, now Mrs. is stolen. Comes out with the towel. Shots, 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 shots. shots. Yeah. yeah. Old school. I wasn't sung at the wedding in the beginning of the movie by a wedding singer with lots of swearing. Old school. Wait, what? Oh, uh. The, oh yeah. Turn around. Was it old school or was it wedding singer? Old school. Oh, maybe. Interesting. Turn around. Yeah, I remember that. It's a good song. Though. Maybe. <laughs> I know why it is now. It's not just because it's a, it's like heartfelt. It's like bro, freaking meatloaf crew. <laughs> Like, that whole album was basically this rock opera. Like, apparently, like, from what I hear, it's like, if you've ever gone to a meatloaf show back in the day, it basically was, like, a rock opera. Like, there's, like, clowns and storylines. I'd love to go see something like that today. Yeah, like, um, apparently there's another musical coming out from, um, the Repo Guy, but it's, like, straight to DVD. Though it looks like it's a, a theater, like, a stage musical. It looks like one of those, like, you know, you buy Joseph's Dream Coat on DVD, and it's, like, it looks like a stage show, but it's filmed, so it's all fake, and that audience is fake. But it's, like, not a movie. It's a stage show on video. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, this girl goes to, like, the circus or the amusement park and then the devil runs it. Mm. And he's like, get on the twirly slide, my dear. I don't know, I don't know what it's about, really. But <laughs> <laughs> it looks like that. I think like, this ought to be interesting. So, And then, of course, like, the media's like, oh, the guy who directed Saw 2 is trying to make a musical. Now I'm like, leave him alone. I'm like, he directed the Saw movies so he can, like, work up the credit to make Repo. And then all you guys, like, rag on him for, like, oh, he's trying to be, like, Time Warp. And freaking, you know, I'm like, there could be more than one musical every 20 years. <laughs> no, only one. Like, I, I had these reviewers, like, reading them, and it's pissing me off because they're like, oh, he's making Repo. He's trying to be, like, freaking Rocky Horror. I'm like, well, okay, so we can have 12 of the same romantic comedies in a row and no one cares, but just one other musical shows up in 20 years and everyone's like, ooh, I'm trying to be a dark and scary sing song. Ooh, <laughs> drugs. I'm like, come on. Give us a chance, man. Give us a chance to sing. I hate critics. Music. Maybe. Uh, but you love ranting about things you don't like. <laughs> oh, I'm going to do that today, too, because i got a few movies to talk about. Oh, or no. talk about. What we, did you see recently? We can start on a good recently. note. Um, finally watched Game of Thrones. Hey. And I was like, what? Didn't know the show was this good. And this is the pilot. Actually, it's funny because I think Adam hates it. <laughs> Adam, you're missing out. Freaking but Brian loves it. Winter's coming and you're putting on your coat and just trying to hide from it. you got to accept it. I don't even know what Winter's yeah. Coming means yet, but like, Boromir keeps saying it, I'm like, it's gotta be something cool. Yeah, I like the Starks. Yeah. Oh, and the one Bastard. I love John. He Sears. knows he's a bastard. He's so handsome. He could never be anything more. I found one weakling wolf puppy. Oh, he's yours, you bastard. He's all pouty. <laughs> 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 such an ass. They're all so mean to him, I'm like, aw. Oh. Yeah. It was interesting, I got, I got really intrigued by it. Like, I've, I remember, because I'm going through all these waves of TV shows where it's like, Sometimes pilots are awesome, then they set the tone, and sometimes the pilots are garbage, and you have to kind of go with it. Mm -hmm. So, like, I love Arrested Development's pilot, I love Lost pilot, I didn't like Community's pilot, but yep. then I give the show another chance, and I start loving the show, and then I'm watching friggin' Game of Thrones, and I'm like, the pilot had me, I'm like, alright, I'm liking these characters, it's mm -hmm. interesting, he seems like a more noble individual, versus his, like, old king friend who's just a whore. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. That's Trumpet King. Yeah, that's Trumpet King. That's Wily. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> that loosey goosey king. <laughs> you never call a king a whore. Yeah, you would. Oh, praise the whore. <laughs> I hope Warmer says that at some point. But I don't think he will. But it's interesting. There's some interesting struggles. Long it's like, live the whore king. Yeah, and 
Boromir. Yeah, Boromir is, uh, I like him. Horror Which was it you sent me the other day? Watch Fox says Horror Mirror. Horror Mirror. It was the uh, Sean Bean <laughs> death reel. Oh yeah, the Sean Bean dies uh, reel. It's, it's pretty he sad. It's just sad music, and it's just showing him getting killed every time. Well, it's funny, because like, now I'll see his rough. face on a movie thing I haven't seen. I go to Jerry, I'm like, yeah, you think he dies in this one? <laughs> Probably. Pretty much. Flux Fox, I expect today's uh, fan art to be of Horror Mirror. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> on a surfboard. Flexbox makes us the best fan arts. We do gotta get those onto the Shane Hannigans at some point. Uh, that's a that's all the part of the site where we have a fan art section and gallery. Where if you guys send us art, which we do have a few pieces from uh, some of you fine folk, uh, we'll be putting that up at shanahannigans.com in the fan art section. Uh, it'll be a treat. But yeah, no, so I'm looking forward to Game of Thrones. Um, we we were at the, because of the uh, Bell Lightbox, uh, mm -hmm. Maizaki, Spirited Away, whatever exhibit with all those movies, they also had the Game of Thrones exhibit, and they're mm -hmm. handing out, like, single episode DVDs to get you interested. I'm like, all right, so I'll, I'll give this a chance. They were also handing out the free popcorn, and it says on it, popcorn is coming, and I was looking at it for a second, and I was like, oh, I guess that's a pun. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to stay. It's just like... <laughs> like, it doesn't carry the same weight. <laughs> you're, like, sitting in the kitchen looking through the, the microwave uh, window, and you're, like, still looking at it as it's, like, and you're, like, you just don't get it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> No. Uh, no. <laughs> I guess. No, I didn't get that. I should do fan arts just because the host. Horror me. <laughs> uh, it gets really going by episode 5, says Brian Avenue. That sounds nice. Mm -hmm. It's already going. The only thing is, I was always hoping, like, the one big twist. Like, like, you know how. Oh, God. Okay. I don't want to spoil for anyone, but this, this has to be said. There's this, like, pale couple. That it cuts to, like, it's all, like, you know, winter's coming, blah, blah, for a long time. Then they cut to, like, Elfland. It's not Elfland, but these people are so fine and beautiful and pale and going to oh, bathe like and stuff. And stuff is all, like, oh, your breaths are coming in and all this good stuff. And you're like, well, that's awkward. And I'm like, no, it's not awkward yet. Someone's going to say something to make this really awkward. And then the guy's about to leave the room. He's like, I'll see you later, dear sister. I'm like, there it is! Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. just got really awkward. <laughs> There's something I'm missing like, in this really this awkward This is eerie scene. and awkward, but it's not Awkward yet. Yeah, if this was incest, it would be Boom! Like, oh, incest! I called it! Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because someone was like, it's full of incest. I was like, just one. I'm like, oh, wait. Wait, there's more? You saw the whole first episode. Yeah, how much incest was there? It ended with stuff. Oh, I don't even know who that was. That was her brother. Ugh. Yeah. I guess there's like one more for the road. <laughs> HBO's like, damn it! <laughs> Our Martin's like, and bam! <laughs> Is that what he's doing? <laughs> Hello. That guy, yeah. It ended on a pretty good cliffhanger. Or should I say, out the window hanger? Oh. I don't want to spoil anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those puppies are cute, though. Yeah, they're really cute. Yeah. But I'm curious about it, because it, it, for the most part, it seems to be like, you know, you watch like the Tudor, Tudors, the Tudors, whatever, and it's all like, oh, a history piece with some modern, like, shenanigans, but it, and all it's still fairly, like, set in reality. But this is like, it has that kind of realistic, serious tone of it, but there's some, like, magical, mystical elements mm. growing that we don't know what's up just yet. It's on the other side of the wall. Yeah, they never things. come out in, like, fireball, but there is, like, yeah, a yeah, magical yeah. element. There, there's something going them. on, and that's kind of nice. I'm like, alright, I'm into this. I'm interested. I'm intrigued. So I, I will watch more Game of Thrones at some point. Mm. Mm, hopefully. Mm. Might be the next show, because I'm, I'm running out of community to watch. Mm. So I'm catching up to the season. <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry, quickly about community. If you watch it, <laughs> my God, it's episode, I get, they changed it around, uh, for, I read an article about it, but it was supposed to be episode 303, season 3, episode 3, but they changed it to 4 because it just wasn't ready yet and they weren't happy with it and they wanted to make it better, so neither here nor there, but episode 4, if you've seen the timeline episode, my God, it's so good. It's, the second I knew what was happening in the episode, my hair stood on end, I'm like, they did it! Really? It's such a good episode. Oh, the community is my favorite. It's the season three started off kind of all right, but then this episode showed up. And it was like, <laughs> like done, perfect. I'm back. <laughs> oh, so good. You gotta watch it. Mm. Mm. Season three, mm. community. Mm. Now that we've said nice things, let's move on to my. Let's take a quick look at some Katie art before I start to hate. <laughs> was it rant time? Oh, oh boy! We got some movie to talk about. Uh, getting there. Getting there. there Gotta go. speed it up. Yeah. Okay, so, a while back there's a movie in the theaters called The Muppet Movie. Uh, and I, for some reason I really didn't want to see it, I don't know why. Like, something about it 
didn't appeal to me. I don't know what it was. I just didn't want to spend the money and go see it in theaters. I was like, eh, you know. And I think the story's going to end like community now, and I was proven wrong. I'm like, actually, it's the greatest. No, I watched it, and I did not enjoy it. Sounds strange, but I'll explain myself. Mm. What did you think of it first? You know, um, <laughs> I thought it was really, I thought it was really, really sweet. I hadn't seen Muppets in Manhattan though, and I yeah. came home and watched that later, and I was like, I love this one, like super, yeah. super much. There was something about it that was just super, super satisfying. This one was enjoyable. I was kind of in a weird mood when I went to see it. <laughs> um, so maybe it didn't make me as joyous as a yeah. lot of people did, but I was like, still like, like oh, for, it's it's fun. Yeah, for the record, I've always enjoyed like the Muppets. Like, I, I, Muppet yeah, Christmas Carol is really so good. All right. All right, before we say anything bad, I say all good things. So 80s Bot was awesome. That was a great idea. 80s Bot was funny. Uh, Muppet or Man was great, of course. Yeah, Muppet or Man. Uh, I especially liked who was in the mirror for the Muppet. It, it threw me. I'm like, oh, crap, it's him. Yeah. That's weird. Uh, go see it yourself. Okay. This isn't necessarily a spoiler. I'm just going to talk about like my, my, my emotions, my feelings watching the movie. <laughs> um, my first, all right, my first major problem is Kermit is such a wet blanket through the whole movie. He is always depressed. Like, through the whole movie, he's always like, ho-hum, it's too late, guys. And then uh, he gets motivated, but then, oh, it's too late, we can't find a guest. Then he gets motivated, and then, oh, it's too late. The whole time, he is feeling down, and it's just, it's not Kermit to me. Like, Kermit, like, everyone's looking to Kermit to be the leader, and he never really steps up. Mm -hmm. Like, he's always just, oh, ho-hum, oh, it's too late. Well... If you want, we could try. Oh, well, I can't Mupp get Mupp missed. Well, uh, Muppets uh, take Manhattan. He becomes like an accountant uh, or something in the last quarter of the movie. Yeah, well, I'd like to watch that. You know, I, I like the zinger, but it's just that's my first problem. Kermit is so sad and boring for a lot of the movie. It's just it didn't feel right. It's like, eh, like liven up, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the first problem. Hmm. Second problem is wait, right, those are our second problem or third one? I'm trying to help. I, <laughs> I gotta the save the I gotta save the big one for last because it's it is a so big you're like, one. Boom. Um I don't know, uh Okay, second one it's kind of you can argue with me on this one, but the problem with also the film is it's very heavily reliant on you already knowing everything and about the Muppets. Because it's like you're introduced to each character in like these little bursts. It's like there's Gonzo, alright, he's back. There's that guy, alright, he's back. It's yeah. kinda like there's a lot of heavy emphasis on you should already know all this, you know. It's like, and it, it's it was really it's kind of weird because of that. It's like you bring back an ensemble cast, but it's like you're expected to already like them and know them, mm -hmm. and you're good to go. You know, they have more time with Fozzie, of course, but um, so yeah, that, that one that was out of here. There. The big, the very big problem I have with this movie is the main kind of premise and plot of it. Oh, the 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 basic idea is the fact that it's like. No, the Muppet show was like long over, and no one remembers it anymore. But it's all kind of resolved as being like, no one's forgotten you, Kermit, and everyone. The Muppet show's the greatest. Yay, they're all back. And I sat there thinking, and there's something really... When you step outside of it being like a narrative about a show within a show, if you think of the Muppets as a property and as a brand, say like Warner Bros. and Disney and stuff, mm -hmm. it's a very weird plot to be like, oh, no one likes us anymore. Wait, we are the greatest brand. Everyone loves us. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there watching it, I'm just like, it's such like a, not to use the word fleshio, but it's like a self, oh, wow. it's like a self-satisfying kind of movie plot, which is all like, no one's forgotten us, we're the best show ever. And, and it, it, it's, it's kind of like walking this weird line of being self-parody, but at the same time it's genuine because it is like a fully-fledged movie and plot and stuff. And I don't know, it's just like, if, if you say you put any other brand in that, say you put like, the Disney characters or the yeah. Warner Brother characters. And was, the movie is all about, no one likes us anymore, we're not relevant. Wait, we've always been relevant, we're the best. It's, Yay! It's a bit different though, because you say the Disney stuff and it's like just these characters that exist in the world, but the Muppets was always in a premise that they were putting on a show. So it was like their show wasn't relevant to modern times. But then it was like, but oh, it's, and the but nostalgia. Now, now here's the weird part. Want Here, here's that, the weird part. sweet, funny... <laughs> Tying up Jack Black. <laughs> yeah, but like the, the weird part is also you observe like all the jokes and gags they're doing. I'm sitting there being like, do it. It's kind of like any movie that has. Let's say you have a movie. It's about um, like get him to the Greek. Mm. Supposedly, uh, who was in Get to the Greek? What's his face? British comedian. Supposedly he's like was a great rocker and all these great songs. And when you actually hear the songs, you're like, oh, okay, that's kind of all right. And you have movies like, oh, he was the greatest comedian ever, but then he quit. And then you actually watch his comedian bits in the movie, and you're like, oh. 
Those are okay. Okay. <laughs> and the problem with this is, it's like, when, when a movie premise is something that it's like, this person was the greatest at this. Now, it, say a sports movie, you can just say, oh, he got all the slam dunks. And you're like, okay, mm -hmm. he did. Because you can't, that's a finite thing. 20 slam dunks, out of, you know, there, he got them. You can just say right. that, and no one needs to be proven it. When you say this guy's like the funniest comedian, and you're watching the movie, and these jokes are like, okay, and then all the audience in the movie's laughing and loving it. You're like, I, I guess they like him, but he's not really all that funny. And I feel it was kind of the same thing with the Muppets, because all the gags and stuff they're doing in the show was like, the audience is all, you know, actors who are laughing and loving it, but I'm, none of it was like, for me, I'm like, oh, that's a great sketch, and that's, mm -hmm. I was kind of like, all right. And to like, bring it back to, like, yeah. the brilliance of a lot of your favorite sketches that you remember. Yeah, like, it was, it was kind of like, days. I don't know, it, it's, it's basically a movie that says, oh, everyone still loves us for doing the same old thing, and I was just watching what the same old thing was, and I'm like, Okay, like, I felt the same thing with Be Kind Rewind. How it was, like, everyone's loving the videos they were making, you know. And you're watching, and you're like, I guess. And at the very end, it's like, they, the whole town gets together and makes a big video. And they're all screaming, and everyone's laughing and loving it. And you're just watching and be like, I guess it's kind of cute. And mm -hmm. what's his face from Spotless Mine or whatever music videos did it. Mm -hmm. But it's just, it's, 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 it's a problem I have with a lot of movies. Like, when you claim something is the greatest, but it's not doesn't follow through being great within the movie like okay. the characters are you know written to love it but you yourself are like all right i guess it's all right mm -hmm. and th these are kind of two major problems i had with films it's just like well, no one likes the muppets anymore oh actually they're the best well, oh, I guess it's ratings like nobody you know knew. yeah mm -hmm. i don't know that's my big I, I don't know if i was confusing you all but that's my big problem with the movie mm -hmm. it's just it just feels weird because it's like the movie tells us they're still relevant but are they like, I'm not trying to push for, the Muppets are no longer relevant. But it's the same kind of thing as people saying, <laughs> like, just can't contain them anymore. the writing and things, everything changes gradually. Like, tastes of each era change. Like, um, older comedy, and the, uh, this one I saw recently on, I think it had to do with um, uh, Movie Bob over at The Escapist was doing a mailbag thing. And someone wrote, like, why is there such a big emphasis on dumb father-husband characters in, like, mm -hmm. these today's shows? And because the in the earlier days, in the 50s and 60s or so, all the fathers were, like, these, like, know-it-all perfect stand-up there's shows called father knows best and stuff like that mm. and it was just father was the authoritative figure who knew everything and told you chin up son and go play sports and the retaliation to that in the 70s 80s and 90s was to like make jackass dumb father this figures. like my dad's not like that yeah and, and this was daughters. the retort and then after this getting we're all kind of getting sick of the dumb father characters so we're going to get something a little more eclectic or strange for the next generation of a sly or witty father but isn't just a duh idiot well, sure, because I mean, if you find a formula that works really well, then everybody's going to kind of jump on that. Yeah. And then that formula becomes stale, something else breaks the mold, and then people will gravitate towards that. So, so my point in putting this to the Muppets concept is, like, the Muppets, for their era, made sense it worked. But, like, they are doing kind of all the same kind of old-style gags and intros on today's audience. And, it's, and everyone's still like, it's perfect, it's just the way you remember it, I love it. And I was just kind of watching, like, eh... I guess, like, I don't know if I would sit down and watch a modern Muppet show, let's put it that way, mm -hmm. if it was in the same style, mm. you know, and, but the movie is telling us, it, it, it's great, and it's, and everyone, it's true to form, But know? did you hear Piggy and Kermit's song at the end? Yeah. With the, the lovers, sure. the dreamers, and, and me, it's just such a pure, I know, innocent, I know. like... It's just, I, when you step out, that's my major problem film, it's just, it's, it's a film about a a property that exists in our world as a marketable property because you can run out. You're just looking at it like Disney. <laughs> Maybe in a way, you know. Like I, li I like the concept of the older Muppet movies where it's like, let's go put on a show, and you're like, all right, cool. Yeah, well, but it's not like no, the I audience that, needs to one, accept us. This one, it was very like the world's so cynical and oh, yeah, and all they like, need oh, is the Muppets again. That's depressing. But the last one, it was funny because it was the same kind of thing. They're trying to pitch their show, but it was really funny because they're yeah. going from producer to producer, and as a whole, they're all just doing their own song and dance. Yeah. And there's something really cute and funny about it, and people there were rejecting them too because it was yeah. like. We don't have a show here, and they're getting kind of like pushed around by New York, but yeah, maybe to a degree, this movie also funny. felt a little repetitive because of that. It's like they're doing it again. Yeah, I guess I felt that when I was and, watching that movie. And then you got like, there, there's this other question of like, they, he goes, "Well, how are we going to get them all?" And he's like, "Oh, didn't you see the first movie? It's like we got to drive." And it's like, so then you stop for a second, and you're like, "So, is this the real world?" And the Muppet Show is a show, <laughs> and were the original movies the real world, or were they movies? And this is the real world, and then you're friggin' going Inception on the Muppets. Oh, that's gonna make that sound. Walk out, walk out. You're like, I don't know. And I don't know. So that was me watching it. Sorry, mm -hmm. I just went text Richmond. Yes. <laughs>
Uh, that's my rant for the Muppets. So, you know, go out, check it, whatever. Is, but it's just, it's just, there's something rough you with know, it. No, it's, it's like I, I liked it, but I felt like there was something dead inside of me that I didn't feel the same joy that everybody <laughs> on the internet is like. Seems to be yeah. happiest movie of my life. I was like, well, because oh. like yeah, like none of the other songs really did anything for me, but like maybe it was like. A, Muppet of Man, like I enjoyed it a little more, maybe because that of the hype. Really cute too. It like, was all right, like, but like then half the songs that like I enjoy. What's her face from uh, Enchanted or whatever mm -hmm. it is? Like she, yeah. she's fun and she's a cartoon character or sing song. And we don't have enough sing song people these days. But just like half of her songs, I just felt there was kind of there wasn't anything to them. It was just kind of like now is her time to sing. And there, there's a kind of crucial rule, uh, not even a rule, but like one of those unwritten rules, like the hero story. With musicals, it's the songs are supposed to like kind of push the story ahead. But the same problem they had with Corpse Bride was the songs didn't go anywhere. They're just like vaguely describing what's going on, but for no good reason. It's just this could have been said, but instead they spoke it. It was like, you know, when in making Scott Pilgrim they're saying how musicals, when the emotion gets so high, you all sing about it. And mm -hmm. Scott Pilgrim emotions get so high, we have a giant fight. Mm -hmm. You know? And I felt like these songs, there was nothing high enough to push the song. Muffler Man was a big emotional moment. But all the other songs were just kind of like, they're there because we got to cram some songs in this movie. I like Me Party. That was cute. Yeah. She's having a Me Party because she's Olivia. You know? <laughs> oh, well. well, you have to be a woman. Olivia. I'm sorry. Yeah, I couldn't <laughs> understand that. Yeah. Oh, Wells. Yeah. Ah, Wells. What do I know? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I'll all write right. my own puppet-based movie. It'll be great. Oh, hey, I have a puppet, actually, if you want it. Which one? Over in the corner there. Where? There's a little you have a puppet? Yeah. Oh wait, isn't that mine? Why is... You have that too? We both have it! Well mine doesn't have earrings and a chain. Weird. His name isn't Sunny. Wow, this one's like... <laughs> there we go. Yeah, mine, mine's definitely a little more it's still has tag on it. This is kind of creepy. I give him a voice, but I don't want it. <laughs> don't want to commit to making it alive. Maybe. Uh, why do you have this here? Ah, uh, long story. I'll explain it. <laughs> wah, wah. It's kind of odd. <laughs> I'll leave that hanging. But, right. Uh, yeah. So um. So that's my rant for movies. What time okay. is it now? Mm. Eight, Coming up ten. almost at the half hour. Are you gonna go catch Hunger Games tonight? I think so. Are you? I'm feeling hungry for the Hunger Games. Waka waka. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, uh what's going on? People are talking about things. I'm not sure. Muppets felt a little bit like some kind of weird Muppet fanfic. Yeah, it, I, I can see that because Jason Siegel, right? His mm -hmm. name? He was like a big fan of Muppets and wrote it. And it felt very fanish. Yeah, that's the tricky thing. It's like, you know, like the, people like grow up liking something and eventually they sometimes get a job in it. Like people write for The Simpsons that have been growing up and watching it or mm -hmm. whatever. But it's like, how do you draw that line of like, an actual work and a fan work, where it's just like, oh, this happens, and this happens, just like the old times. It's like, I don't know. Oh, you mean like taking a chance and maybe going against what you think? The I, I think, is? I think the Muppet movie was very safe. Let's put it that way. Like it, it's, I felt like I've seen it before. Let's put it that way. <laughs> all right. Like I'm not saying I had to take like mighty risk, but like I'm like, all right, I'm glad I didn't go to theaters for this. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was very safe. Yeah, there you go. Like, Ten Ten took some risks. Made some stupid mistakes, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that chase... You haven't seen it? I still recommend seeing it. Like, I enjoyed it. Aside from that one major thing that just blew my mind with how ridiculous it was, um, everything else was pretty good. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. Good. Snowy, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Snowy, care. Look at something. Please. <laughs> Am I talking to myself? Um, what else is happening here? People are talking about things. New Muppet Shaggy? No, that's not a new Muppet Shaggy. That'd be creepy. We were going to actually make a puppet a while back. I have the the Vault Boy puppet from uh, Fallout. And I wanted to like switch his hair to my hair and put a little hat and he'd be like my travel show puppet. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> but I am not a seamstress. I have a microphone and just do the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe you can clarify this for me because I think we talked about it briefly. When we're over at my place for Silent Lion King night. That was amazing. We should explain that in a second. <laughs> we'll get into that in a sec. But supposedly, uh, Adam Warren 
of Dirty Pair fame, of yes. Empowered, of yes. a couple of Gen 13 specials, is going to be a TCAF. Yar. Izzy, is this true? I believe so. I'll, I was actually bringing you a book to give to you. I'm going to pull that out of my bag. Uh, yeah, his most recent, I don't know if this is his most recent book, Empowered, Volume 5, Ooh. made by Adam Warren, uh, probably the, what's the word for, like, first dude? First dude? First dude to start doing, like, North American manga style. Well, I think it was, like, Ben no. Dunn. Back no, in the day too. he's the first. Like the ninja high no. school guys. They did the same time, and he did first slightly. Okay. <laughs> there was a race to the art desk, and he shoved Ben Dunn and Ninja High School, and went like, made dirty pair. Right. <laughs> and now he's making empowered and silly and sexy. And this story actually, the weight is happening. Like shit's happening now. Ooh. Like the first few books is like kind of hints of stuff going on, it's, it's but like book wrong. five is actually a story. This isn't a slight against him. It's just like it's been just kind of stuff happening. Well, it's like books. a cheesecake romp. Yeah, story. it's it's, it's fun and really silly. Funny right it's got great characters. I like I like her voice. <laughs> her voice? Like just the her dialogue. Like yeah, yeah. Character. She's an interesting character, and uh, I, I love a bunch of the characters. But uh, yeah, actually, like some story is taking off now. Now I'm excited because I'm like, this is what I'm here for. You know, I loved Sim Hell from the old Dirty Pair books, and it's coming true to form. He's mm. he's great at his storytelling. He's great at his ideas. Now I'm looking forward to the book. And of course, Maid Man is just an awesome superhero. Yeah, can you, is there a panel you can show? Well, there's let's see, there's Maid Man here. <laughs> It's pretty classy. He's just like the Batman character. He's yeah, just he's, like a maid. <laughs> he's just, yeah. Complete with high heels. And he has a broom. Lady panties. Yeah. I remember seeing a panel from like, I think the next book where the one bad guys are like all uncomfortable with how he's dressed. Broom, it was like, it was just this baby bird was one of the superhero characters. It was like a <laughs> giant baby bird. And it's so creepy. It's yeah. got a shell on its head. It's like, how do you come up with these weird superheroes? He's pretty badass though, Maid Man. I like him. <laughs> He's one of the nicer guys. Everyone's pretty shitty to uh, Amp okay. for Amp. They're all mean to her, but he's actually nice. So that's cool. But uh, check it out and check him out. We gotta bring some books from this one. I know. TCAP. It's it's uh, uh, that. TCAP's gonna be amazing. Every episode we tell you TCAP's gonna be amazing. I mean, it? if I wasn't so super busy all the time, I'd have mm. more time to be like, it's gonna be so amazing. But I'm already <laughs> pretty excited. Yeah, we got um, also coming, um, I don't have the book here, but the creator of. I think you have the books. Our favorite cute little cat book, Cheese Sweet Home. Oh, they're in the back. Uh, Konami, what's her face? His face? No, his, her. Is it his or her? A... Whose face is Bella. it? I don't know. Konami something or something Konami. Gonna be a TCAF. First North American appearance. Uh, and if you enjoy Cheese Sweet Home, which is a really cute book about cats, you can also watch the anime on Crunchyroll, and there's like a, they're like four minute long episodes. And there's like a hundred plus of them, so yeah, all the kitty cat fun you could yeah, possibly want. Yeah, it's little cats like it. Yeah, it's, it's like one of those books where, kind of like uh, Yatsubo, where it's like, this is the mind of a child. It's like, this is the mind of a cat, right, Puzzle? Dumb cat. She doesn't care. <laughs> Whatever. It's just like, what are cats thinking? It's like, this book knows. Kind of like the What's Michael books back in the old Dark Horse days. Mm -hmm. It's just like, this is such a cat. I don't even have a cat, but I feel like this is a cat. <laughs> you know, that kind of deal. Mm -hmm. Where did my mouth pointer go? What's going on? There it is. Yoink. Uh, I wish I could go to TCAF, says Endless Sky. Oh, Sister Spooky, says Brian Avenue, yes. Yeah. Her, her story got really interesting in the last two books, um, four and five. Because, like, like you, you, I think you found out earlier why she's being such a jerk, but, like, there's a little more to it that's interesting. Um, or maybe not more to it, but her relations and stuff, and really get into it, yeah. Sometimes I have a hard time reading it, like, I'm not, you have to be in a certain mood sometimes. It's, it's very, very wordy. So if yeah. you're not in the mood for a lot of kind of... Well, it's, it's, it's almost mainly, like thesaurus puns. Like, I feel like yeah. I used to do this a lot when I was writing comics back in the day, where I'd go through the source and just slap as many words down as possible. <laughs> so there's the... There's one character, where is he? Wolf, right? he's, he's like a belt. He's like a demon that's trapped in a belt. Let's see. <laughs> this guy, Cage his Demon. dialogue is so... And he, he uses gigantic big words. And, yeah. But, like, late at night, you're like... And sometimes you just skip ahead just to see how people respond to him to guess what he said. Yeah. Because it's just, it's so, it's also like inverted wordy. Like really instead of, it. he picked up a glass, it'd be the glass was picked up upon by him. And you're like trying to read 12 paragraphs of that kind of backwards It's talk. actually really funny though. It is funny, but like at night sometimes I'm just like, ugh, not in the mood for this. It's but, like a big creep. As I said, book five did pick up nicely. As far as the story goes. It's like, oh, good times. Good times. Check it out. Also look at Adam Warren's older classic works. From Dirty Pair, Plague of Angels, Sim Hell. I some newer ones. We didn't really read those ones. Either. Mm. Oh. Get some Gen 13s. Oh, Magical uh, Drama Queen, Roxy. Titans. Hmm? Uh, no. Uh, 
Teen Titan. Did he? No, it was a Titan um, reimagining. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just called Titans. It wasn't AE. It no, was I keep like thinking Titans. AE, but it wasn't. It was paper. Why is it been called Titans? It was rock, paper, rock, stone? Pa no. Scissor, stone? paper, scissors, stone? Scissor, paper, stone? stone. Titans? Because her power was like a... Yeah. That was, that was an interesting read, too. It had some, he has some good future ideas that are all kind of coming true. He's like a modern Jules Verne. Because he was all like... <laughs> his characters would have like t-shirts and every other panel would be like a different image. Like it was changing because it was a screen. Like cloth screen. That was cool. And that's like happening now. So, like, Adam Warren called it, you know? He's the next Jules Verne. Just because he doesn't want to draw the same thing every panel. It's or like, that. Awesome. <laughs> but, like, he also, like, snuck in all these characters from, uh, like, uh, uh, what was Tank it? Police. Tank Police and I'm pretty sure Ghost in the Shell. In there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, he basically snuck in all these characters. Kind of like what you would have done, too, back in the day. Oh, like, yeah, I used to just drop up parodies all the time. You drop, like, your favorite characters into your stories and see if anyone catches them. <laughs> But uh, definitely worth checking out. Uh, what's going on? Oh, progress on the picture. Sure, fine. Enough of my rambling. Still haven't done the face yet. Really? Let's see what you got. <laughs> Legs. <laughs> guitar. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yeah, working on it. Got to get faster. Mm. So I used to working on a Cintiq all the time. It's like I get nervous when I work without undo buttons. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like the risk though? Yeah, I, I love it. Makes me feel alive. Yeah. Things like, can go anywhere. You make good, mis uh, happy mistakes. Happy mistakes? Yeah. Is that how it goes? Yes. <laughs> uh, what else are we looking at here? TV series. Yeah, so, Hunger Games movie. Go check that out tonight. Cool. Hopefully. I would join you, but I really have to get this storyboard done before season two. No. I see. Because wow. then it's going to be TCAF, and I'm going to be like, I can't go hang out, guys, I'm doing a storyboard. That's yeah, nice. that'd be a rough dance. <laughs> That's like Comic-Con when I was trying to do a little bit of work on the side. I was mm. so stressed out. Yeah, don't do that. Never work while you're on a trip. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. It's complete silly business. Absolutely. Speaking of Comic-Con, tomorrow is um, hotel, hotel, hotel day? rush. Yeah. Um, we, uh, we probably should have booked our hotel last July. Oh, good <laughs> to know. I think about it. It totally slipped my mind. I was like, yeah, we'll work out somehow. So everybody I'm emailing to be like, hey, so you guys have got a room? It's like, ah, oh, you should have told us months ago. We already booked a room and there's no room. Yeah, <laughs> we got to figure that out. We whereas, got... whereas the first year, our bumbling Canadianness touched people's hearts and they took us in. Yeah. This year, it's like, you're adults, go get your own place. Is there any good chances of getting anywhere? Like, do you well, think... Well, uh, I think so. Tomorrow uh, at... You're going to try their hotel first? Yeah, at 12 noon. I don't care how much it is, just do it. Oh, <laughs> uh, that sucks. That's why people in Anime North get the room like a year in advance. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I didn't even think about it. Hmm. Damn. <laughs> I don't want to ride into the city every day. Let's put it that way. I know. Well, there's a big shuttle system going around. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> I just want to be either in Gaslamp or, you know, somewhere. Well, let's see if we can book a hotel after this. Oh, yeah. For that's regular reads. Just to get it, yeah. Yeah, because I, I was looking at one and it was a, a big condo kind of thing. And I was like, oh, that's good. It, looked, it was like a thousand, thirteen hundred dollars. I was like, that's not bad for a whole like week split between four people. Yeah. I was like, it's thirteen hundred at night. It's no. like six grand for a week. That's that's where they that's, get you. That's almost my college tuition from for a year. <laughs> like if so, you're a big movie company, sure you can get away with that's that. Stupid. But not for us. Just because there's couches in it. Yeah. And, <laughs> in rooms for like interviews and you set up your poster and stuff Ugh. it's like the whole movie junket thing where all the friggin uh, reporters are outside your door they Ugh. just keep cycling in you keep saying the same thing every time how was it to work with the director oh it was so fun he's just so imaginative he's just so, so oh, fun oh it's delightful I couldn't imagine being with a bad director then the next movie oh he was so fun and delightful couldn't imagine being with okay. she wouldn't even actually burn bridges in and this guy's saying they can't go to Comic Con at all this year, too expensive. Yeah. 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 It is. But it's like my one vacation, so there you go. Yeah. <laughs> we work for this. I know we're going to C2E2, but we're only staying as long as the convention, if not shorter. Because we're leaving like the yeah, Friday. Yeah, we're there on the Thursday. We're leaving on a Sunday night. Around Sunday. Yeah. So we gotta get a good Should deep dish pizza. Time. Should be, hopefully. Hope so. Uh, Cuddles is here saying hello. Oh, Feather Heather saying, yeah, finally home on a Wednesday night so I can watch. Boom. Ditch 35 saying, crap, I should have paid more attention to the broadcast starting 50 minutes ago. Well, we record each episode, so you do have a 
Man, I feel like there's like a record number of people watching tonight. This is more than usual. Yeah, hello. Why is today such a good night? Is it because people thought it was spring? They were like, I'm going outside, and then it got cold it's again. They're like, yeah. enough of this. Yeah. I'm not doing my internet. We got so messed up in Toronto. I was like, it was literally last week we were, I was outside in shorts. Yep. Now it's freezing again. Yep. <laughs> oh, wellsies. Maybe it killed all those evil bugs who were going to come and get us. <laughs> they were like coming for your house and just dropping. And then the, the winter door. came again, and I'm like, thank you, Sean Bean. <laughs> Well, no, the worst is, um, my gate by my house, uh, there's, like, a big tree that overhangs over it. For some mm. reason, spiders love making their webs right <laughs> over the gate. So if I'm not looking, I'm going to walk face first into a web. Pretty so much. I'm always looking for this. Just like, uh... And sometimes I'll just be these big, horrible things, and I'm going to get a broom <laughs> and just kind of take it down, because I'm just so... I'm sorry, this is my path. Phobic. i got to move you. Ugh. Sorry, bro. Ugh. No, and then last year we had, like, uh, baby spiders hatch in here, so it was just like... Ah! Sorry, everywhere, sorry. everywhere. You walk in, it's that little violin music playing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got Stephen McCrane saying, wish I can join you guys in San Diego Comic Con. This year, last year was the bomb. You're in Japan right now, though. How's that going? Yeah, that's awesome. Send us or some you toys. were in Japan. Did you bring us toys? That's all I ask of people to go to Japan. Like, find me nice toys that are imported. Here. I just want interesting candy. That's true. Well, you can get those in San Diego or San Francisco. If you go to Japan town in San Francisco, they have everything. Everybody. You never need to leave. Oh, so fun. Mm. They have a Hello Kitty shop. They do. Yeah, they do. Ugh. That's a time. You know there's a, I, I don't know if I mentioned this, the Hello Kitty plane. Like, you can book it? Yeah, it's like a Hello Kitty plane. The interior is all Hello Kitty. That's Hello sickening. Kitty snacks. Do you think people get that, like, at last minute? Because they're, like, <laughs> trying to get the next flight out of Japan. And it's like, ugh. It's this businessman and these, like, cat, this giant cat suit comes out. And, <laughs> and they're like, buckle up your seat. And it's like, cat paws. And, like, <laughs> like this is, and then, like, just this happy uh, music is blasting just a little bit too loud. They play caramel dancing the whole flight. You're like, why? <laughs> You're in for an 11 hour wow. flight. <laughs> Everybody get the dance. Like, a sure this isn't a stopover. <laughs> so oh, <party> good. <laughs> that would be the day. <laughs> But we're going to have that kind of party over here for TCAF, you can bet. Hope so. We're going to have fun, 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 if you're coming to TCAF to Toronto. Absolutely free. Not the flight, of course, but, or the stay, but yeah. the con itself is freezies over at the Metro Toronto no. Library. No? What? No? The Metro Toronto Library? I don't know what it's called. The it's Toronto Library place. Library. There you go. Toronto Reference Library. <laughs> don't go to the Metro Toronto Library. I don't even think that one that exists. Is. Like for Shaggy said, it would be here. Father Heather says, TCAP. Oh gosh, excited. Yeah, you are. Yep. It's going to be a time. We're going to do karaoke nights. We're going to the Badass Shoe Museum. Do you really want to go to that? I place? need an excuse to go to the shoe museum. I've been meaning to go there, but I don't want to go alone. Take Helen. No. Okay. Take, I'm not taking take anyone. Bellin. I want to take a whole crew of people so we make up for the fact. It's not that exciting. I, I think it would be. If we're all there, we'd all be like making jokes about shoes. I guess. <laughs> You're like, look at that. I wouldn't wear that shoe. That's a funny, good fashion, <laughs> fashion, I tell you. Funny, funny shoe. Funny shoe. It's good to go to a shoe store if you want to see some funny shoes. Alright, let's step back a second. So, what Lion King, what Silent Lion King night is. Oh, this was amazing. It's not like a fake Christmas holiday. It's called Silent Lion King because what we did, I had this epiphany. So I was at home one day exactly. and I started reciting the Lion King from the beginning. I made it like a good third way through. Like just saying it mm -hmm. out loud. And I'm like, I'm good at this. We should have a night where we play Lion King with the audio off, we mute it, and we set up some microphones, and we all just try to voice out the whole movie straight. <laughs> with beer. <laughs> lots and lots of beer. <laughs> so I buy my 12-pack my of Rickards. Uh, some people brought some Guinness and stuff. Uh, Glenn made a macaroni pizza. Gosh, yeah, he did. So oh, we, we, he had, like, this 12-crate of craft dinner and bought, like, a pizza from the room convenience store or whatever and just like cooked macaroni and put it on top of it that was interesting but so we all just watched the lion king silence and just karaoke the whole thing i guess you know, I without think, subtitles no yeah. subtitles all from memory we stayed pretty true to it i think for the first three minutes yeah and then oh, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> well there's certain parts of the but movie it was close though because there's stuff that you remember that you yeah. just, everybody will say yeah. this line <laughs> it's just like because like everyone just kind of gets they like, will we'll start forgetting that someone knows it and then that reminds us all and it's like you basically this is only going to work with mid to late nineties Disney movies so like Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, uh, Little Mermaid, Lion King, 
Anything before or after that, it's not going to happen. Mm. <laughs> so we have three more nights of this, I think, in the next year. So next month, I'm thinking of Beauty and the Beast, because like, I can start, you know... I can do that. The songs, too. Those were... One winter night, an old out. beggar woman came to a castle that offered a single rose for return for shelter. The prince said no. <laughs> Repulsed by her haggard appearance, the prince sneered at her gift and turned the old woman away, but she warned him not to be deceived by appearances because he found it. missed a part. <laughs> he dismissed her again. The old beggar woman melted away. To the beautiful enchantress. As punishment. It was Cogworth's voice. <laughs> oh, I don't know. So basically, that's what it's going to be like. Yeah. And then it goes... But really drunk. <laughs> yeah. Less cognizant than this. So, if you guys want to have a good time, you can also uh, spice it up a bit if you want to bring, like, sound effects, like coconuts and, like, clown horns. Sure, brought sound effects. I was thinking that, but I think this is complicated enough. I think Lion King could have really done some spice. <laughs> it could have done some coconuts for the bison scene. <laughs> Run, Simba! I found the parts I didn't really remember much was the uh, hyena parts. Like, it was just, like, I just couldn't remember their lines, mostly. But, like, for the most part, yeah, it was damn. Mm -hmm. It was fun. I'm glad you did it. Yeah, it was a time. And this Saturday should be interesting. Oh, this Saturday uh, we're going out to play Quidditch. Yeah. <laughs> at the local park. Um, the original reason is I just need it for a video, a stop motion Quidditch thing where I'm just gonna have people jump while holding brooms and then like be flying around. But apparently, if if people are so inclined, they can actually do an actual game, and we'll see if it works. Instead of brooms, I bought a bunch of mops because they're cheaper at Dollarama. <laughs> The mops were like 50 cents cheaper. That's not going to look crazy at all. Oh, all right. It's going to be perfect. I need everyone else. It's basically like for, um, just for the end of a video. For the end of a TTDC video. Oh, what's that? New season? Maybe. Guess what? What? I'll tell you. Okay. What? All right. All right. <laughs> so, um, a, a few weeks back, I'm going to jump over to Katie Cam for this, see a little animation going on. Uh, a few weeks back, I actually sat down and shot five episodes worth of talking content in one day. We're talking to the camera, and I'm trying to see if I can, like, release them weekly. Hey. Ah. I would love to get back into weekly updates. Wouldn't that be fun? So, uh, keep an eye out. Um, this, I may have the ad for it, the promo, uh, April 1st or so. So, you might think it's a joke. You might think, oh, April Fool's, he's not doing anything. I know him. Nay, the fool is you, because I will be doing things. Um, this is just an experiment. I may not do it forever, but I just felt like I needed to shoot something because I was getting bored. Because I was only doing like one project. And I was like, ugh. Hopefully the weather's nice. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. You guys get to see some interesting... It's basically just me... The, the, this kind of spawned for me working on uh, articles for Uber Friendship. Uberfriendship.com, check it out. But um, I was realizing like, no one reads articles. And if I'm going to spend all this effort like writing something, I might as well videotape it. So instead of articles, I'm going to be doing videos every week. <laughs> Done. There we go. But the idea is to actually try to shoot them simpler so it doesn't take so long. Yeah. A fool is me, says TV Dinner. A winner is you. Excellent. Uh, Father Heather saying, oh, and plug, plug, uh, there will be Quidditch at Con Bravo. So not only at this uh, Con Bravo Con out in Burlington uh, will there be like Battle Zone for you LARPers. It's gonna be Quidditch with like the actual teams, like friggin' we're talking UFT maybe, and Ryerson maybe, and oh, no. Seneca maybe. I don't know. We actually have. I think every school now that I've graduated has a Quidditch team. Yeah, where were they when we were in school? Not at our school. Yeah. Because it wasn't popular yet. Uh, if you're curious what the hell I'm talking about, check out the documentary Brooms Up. On YouTube. We found on YouTube, it's like a 30-minute documentary about actual Quidditch leagues. It was like the, the fourth year World or North American Cup anyway. And you get to see all these teams like coming to New York to play Quidditch. And it looked like a time. It looked like a time and a half. Uh, in this same shag, do you put thought into the shirts you wear on TTDC or do you just grab something and put it on? Funny you ask me that. Because I haven't mentioned um, anything about the shirts. Um, this season, for, for a part of... This is a very specific question. Um, for, for this year, I decided to do a little spring cleaning where I actually went through every single shirt I own just to be like, I gotta get rid of some of these. I have so many shirts and half of them I never wear. I just cycle the ones at the top. And it was really... <laughs> just, this drawer is too deep. I'm just gonna... <laughs> yeah. Well, what I did is I brought every shirt out, divide them into, like, categories. I'm like, alright, this is, like, artsy design, this is minimalist, this is video game, this is comic, okay. and this is, like, long That's sleeves. That's a lot more organized than my drawers. Oh, yeah. My drawers are awesome. It's, like, fancy, normal sucking. <laughs> 
got a whole subcategory. We'll have a section for like cleaning things and you don't care if you get acid on your shirt. So, you know. Acid, you said. Yeah, unfortunately I ruined a nice Batman shirt because I didn't have that section. Like I was like washing and I got like bleach what are you doing with acid? on a Batman shirt. No, it was bleach. It's yeah. kind of like acid. But I ruined that shirt forever. I'm like, oh, and it was like legitimately retro. Because it was an old shirt, so it looked like when you buy like a modern Ninja Turtles shirt, it's like, <laughs> it's messed up, Urban Outfitters. But no, like this is a legitimate messed up shirt. But now it's even more messed up, because there's a big friggin' bleach stain on it. You just wait, that's going to become really cool. It'll be like 70 bucks at Blue Note. Kind of like the uh, faded pants that I bought at friggin' Blue Notes. Yeah, some watch jeans. I didn't mean to, it was just that's the only one they offer. <laughs> like everyone looks like they did Rockstar slides now. Because their jeans are like, yeah. I know, it's those strategic rips and stuff. Yeah, I hate that. Because I, I want to earn it. I'm gonna earn it. Parkour. Yeah. Anyway, Parkour. Um, so as far as this season of TDC, all the shirts are intentional. That's all I can say. <laughs> and the goal is not to wear the same one twice. Okay, since you guys are here, this is a little behind the scenes fun. Um, since all the episodes of this recent batch are all shot on the same day, I switched my shirt for everything, and it looks like I did on different days. Sneaky. It was all done in a row. Yeah. That's called productivity. Yeah. It's like shoot, switch shirt, shoot, switch shirt. It's like sometimes Months worth like, of content. I'll see a tweet from you at like a... Uh... Nine in the morning, and I'm like, lies! <laughs> I know that's sweet, sweet. You know, I gotta set it to me. <laughs> sweet. Robot. You lie. Well, it's usually like it's midnight. I'm like, no one's gonna see this amazing tweet. Let's get people on work hours. I'm like, okay, you get in at work at nine, you pretend to be busy, then you give up by 9 20. Yeah. So my tweets show up at 9 20. That's a perfect tweet. Yeah, but then Katie's like, he's not awake! <laughs> see the lie, everyone! He's a liar! <laughs> he's a fraud and a coward. Uh, Flexbox saying go Sheridan Snapdragons. I guess that's the Sheridan team. Oh, I like that. Is that the same? Because how they says oh snap. Do people do that? They're all like snap, they just come snap, 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 snap. They say it, snap, yeah. snap, snap. That's a community snap. reference if you're wondering. Awesome. <laughs> you saw that episode. Chang. Snap, 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 snap. Oh, snap, with the insulting. Snap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so good. That was an amazing episode. Trampoline episode. Oh my god. That was jaw droppingly good. Oh, anyway, enough about community. I mentioned it too many times. Um, unfortunately, no team at Sheridan yet. It says, oh, really? Ah, that's. If I ever go back, it will be. Who's there? Uh, start it. Flux Fox. Start same. it. Uh, it bleach is anti acid, which is worse than acid. What? Apparently. It says, uh, Clairvoyant. Is it like that Clairvoyant. red matter? Anti matter? Bleach matter? Speaking of which, I think there's like a Bleach movie in the works for North America. I'm like, you guys are nuts. You guys are trying to cram an insane amount of dogma into like two hours. Wow. Because Bleach is basically like, you have a pact with the spirit lady to kill the ghost things. And it's like, now all your friends have that power. And now you're an elite member of the team in the thing. I'm like, how are you going to cram all this into one two hour? Oh, they'll find a way. Maybe. Or they won't, like the Dragon Ball movie. Was jaw dropping in a different reason. I haven't seen that. Can you do you have to see it and know. No? Oh. <laughs> I saw it in theaters. I can't see it again. <laughs> like, Speed Racer was great. Dragon Ball, the movie, was. Oh. They turned it into high school shenanigans. It's basically, if you've seen that movie, never back down. Slap spiky hair on it. Mm. Boom. It's just like, Hiroshi, the kids at school are mean to me. And he's like, I'll teach you the command man. Oh boy! What oh, Piccolo, it? why are we mixing the first storyline with the second? Because I'm Piccolo. Oh, no. <laughs> Dragon Ball, the movie. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm like, Bleach is going to be just as good. But wow. if you fans of Roroni Kenshin, a live-action Japanese film is recently uh, coming cool. out soon. Trailer looked really badass. Got a good mix of, uh, it seems, a, like I, I didn't really follow the original series too far. But it seems that this one kind of mixes more of the whole Samurai X or whatever, like the movie. Of the pre-story, with, with the like, it's mixing the serious with the comedic. Because the Roroni kind of series is usually like silly, and you get serious once in a while. But it looks like they're taking you to the harsh Roroni Kenshin stuff. The early days. Yeah, so it, it looks really intriguing. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to see it. Most of curious to see. Yeah, that's a lot of live action I'm seeing. Um, we're almost running out of time, so oh, we actually are over time. I'm actually gotta get going soon. If I want to make it to the Hungry Games. Gonna be a time, I say. Did I go through just about everything? Yeah, we can save these for later. Good. Maybe. Comic Lounge is open. Check yeah, that out. On College party. Street. It's like a lounge. We've got comic books. Got a shelf. Got shelves. Um, I haven't seen it like how it's gonna function normally because it was a party night when we went, but I'm curious if it's just like <laughs> coming. Packed all the time. Or if you just come in and read, or do you have to pay and then read? Like I don't know if it's like a chill place or it's like you gotta pay to read books. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna show up. <laughs> or you gotta borrow. buy books. Is it like a loaning thing? I don't know. 
But uh, check it out. Comic Lounge in Toronto on College Street, a little west of place. Where is it? Uh, where is it? It's in between, like, it's, it's, it's past Bathurst, so it's in Little Italy. West of Sushi D. <laughs> so look up Sushi D. <laughs> you can find the Comic Lounge in Toronto and have a time. Uh, let's get some last minute reads in. Let's uh, jump over to Katie Cam. I think she's about done too, just actually. Done. This is timing up nicely. Yeah, just a couple tweaks. Uh -huh. there, but I'm pretty much done. Just throwing in the lightning. There you go. And uh, he's got a design on his shirt. I still have to research, so that's what a do. double fine picture. Ooh. <laughs> I actually um I posted the rep on uh, last night on Twitter, and yeah. I was like, you should tweet that at Tim Shaver, and I was like, eh, do I it. Know. I did, but it was like I felt like you know those anime high school things where it's like I have to go tell Kaichi I like him. Oh like, really? Why is that? I don't know. I just oh. felt awkward. <laughs> Did you like leave it in his locker and you found it and you forgot to put your name on it? It's Maybe. like, whoa! Oh, who posted this? I, I imagine the shoujo comic about Tim Schafer to be quite an interesting tale. <laughs> <laughs> the love triangle between Tim Schafer, Ron Gilbert, and Katie. Yeah. Interesting. It's like, but they both worked on Monkey Island. No, I don't know who I like more. <laughs> That'd be weird. He definitely mentioned that on his Twitter. Yeah. I would. Maybe, Maybe that's what the new game's gonna be. Mm. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Mary Sue. It's a weird Mary it's about, Sue. You get to play the desire of Ron Gilbert and Tim Schafer. Bizarre. It's a dating sim. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kickstarter! <laughs> Speaking of which, I think those um, documentary parts yeah, are coming out soon. So get, um, oh, if you did contribute to the Double Fine, get on the forum um, and find out what's up. Because you can also start by telling them what you want in your game. That's awesome. I probably won't. I'll, I'll be hands off on this project. I know they're going to do that. Job, so. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be fine without me. I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah. They must be like, no, voice. no, no. Tim Schafer. What a good time. Cool. Uh, let's get some last minute reads, which I said before, but I got straight. More last minute uh, Go Sheridan. Blah, blah, blah. Let's see. I like both comics and lounging. It's a good combination. It's the best combination. Blood, um, Someone got a punchline going. Uh, I tweeted a fin drawing to Penn Ward once. Twitter is the new locker. <laughs> this is Heather. Heather. Nice. Uh, love Kickstarter. Adam draws. I totally gave Penn Ward and Finn drawing at Comic Con. It was super embarrassing. Just <laughs> us with wish us Canadians yeah. could use it, and it's kind of scary. Says Adam draws. Cool. Yeah. All right. I think I think our challenge for this year is to not be scared to talk to the people who inspire us. Right. Because, God, I remember the first year of TCAP, I was just too afraid to talk to anyone. And I was like, well, that was yeah. a waste. <laughs> so each year since, I'm like, okay, I've got to talk to this person, this person, this person. I don't care how mm. awkward it is. I think the goal... They probably won't remember me if it's that awkward. I believe we should pre-drink before TCAP. And that way... I think we should roll in absolutely smash. <laughs> I'd be like, Adam Warren, you draw a nice <laughs> sign. Like, I think to draw. And he's like, what do you want me to... Stop, 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 stop. To draw. <laughs> <laughs> Stop talking, it hurts. I didn't say drink the night before and get hungover. Oh, God. Hey, uh, Jeff Smith. Ugh. Drop bone. Oh, Can I just put my head down this table? <laughs> I need to rest for like half a second. Kafo! Give me your chair. <laughs> Stop being like that. Let me sit down for a second. <laughs> So, moral of that story, don't pre-drink the night before, do it the day off. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> if at all. Um, sounds like a bad idea. We don't, we don't advocate <laughs> drink, drinking. I awkwarded at Katie at a con, says Endless Guys. Did you really? How about that? <laughs> Pulled an end with Endless I don't think goes. you can out-awkward me at a con. <laughs> out-awkward? We can have an awkward off at this year's Con Bravo. Yeah. I just remember staring at Becky Clunan and just like... No, no. <laughs> oh, okay, Heather, if you're, if you're listening, uh, Con Bravo, that'd be great, because some events are like, at Anime North, it's like, eh, anime date, and it's like, that's stupid. Con Bravo should you have an awkward off, yeah, there should where be an awkward we off. get a special guest, and we put them on the stage, and then we pick two fans to go get something signed, and then they'd be like, I, 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 I like <laughs> and then it's like, the judges, and then, How awkward. and then it's the second guy's turn to be awkward, and he's like, I, I, I. <laughs> and then the judges talk. <laughs> the so price goes to the most awkward fan of whoever our guest up there is at the time. I 
would love to see the photos. <laughs> That'd be a great event. They would be the best. All right, speaking of awkward, I gotta awkward my way over to Hunger Games. It, what? Hopefully, there's no lineup. That would be. Awkward. Can't be that popular because that would be awkward. Yeah. Because I show up and be like, "Crap, we'd have to see something else instead." Like, what else is that? Uh, Jerry saw the raid. Hey, how about that? Yeah. <laughs> cool. I don't know movies anymore. So let's wrap things up. Uh, if you were here at the beginning of the episode, I said something revolutionary. You could just go to sillykingdom.com from now on. Yeah, no more of this no more dot silly blog kingdom dash blogs dot garbage. fun times. Where's the book? Fun times. Wait. You gotta sell it. Wait. We got the most viewers we had in a while. I gotta sell it. Hey, you guys like silly kingdoms? <laughs> then you will like the silly kingdoms of them all. Silly kingdom. It's full of pages and art and words. And bonuses. Tell your friends. Sillykingdom.com. <laughs> Check that yeah. out. Um, yeah. There's great reviews on the back. I'm not going to tell you because you should read yourself and find out who likes this book. It might be you. Maybe you wrote on the back and don't know yes. it. Yes. Deep. Uh, it's fun. It's fun times. Go to thekingdom.com. It should link you over to the site where you can get the printed copy for $10. Digital PDF for less than that. $4. $4. My goodness. Mm -hmm. It can go on all your modern technologies. And you can share it with your friends. But I'd rather they buy it. Anyway. Let's take a last look at Katie's drawing here. It's just about done. All right. I just kind of goofed up one of the lightning bolts. I got <laughs> with white wash. But you there you go, Adam. Sweet. That's for Adam. A little brutal legends. I still gotta play that game. I bought it Boxing Day. Still gotta play Psychonauts. Yeah. Still gotta play a lot of things. Uh, as always, the Twitter. I still gotta play the new um, Silly Kingdom box set. Or no, the Silly Kingdom box set. The no. Monkey Island box. Monkey Island box that I got you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Twitter is at Katie Shy, of course, at Shaggy Shan. That's for me, cool. other things you want to look at, go to uberfriendship.com for the random crap I'm up to. Uh, keep an eye out on my uh, yeah, YouTube channel, Shaggy Shan, of course, mm -hmm. talking to the camera. Good you, times. You can follow me on uh, Twitter, Tumblr, Blogger, DeviantArt as Katie Shy. And, uh, Otherwise, go to shanhannigans.com. Mm -hmm. we're, uh, we're still developing we're still the site. We're still working on it, so don't judge it too hard for what There's it is nothing right new now. on it. It's all old comics and, and the weird. logo of us with little hats and dollar signs is something. That's an in joke. Don't it's worry about joke. that. We're not trying to take all your money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shan Hangins Live every Wednesday is around 7:30 Eastern, unless you live somewhere else. Yeah. Cool. I'm good. I am good. All right. Time for some Hunger Games. See you guys.